Hello, everyone, and welcome back. We hope you're uh, here to join us again today for our fifth day of our um, journey back into nature. Um, can you perhaps maybe just type in the chat room that you're able to see and hear us okay before we get started? Can you hear us? Oh, good. Hello. All good here. Wonderful. Good to hear. Alrighty, so we'll uh, we'll get going. We've got lots of interesting things to cover today and some exciting news to share with you. And so with that, again, we just wanted to, to thank you again for, for coming and joining us. It's been quite a week, that's for sure, and uh, lots of learning for us, and we certainly appreciate all your patience with that. Um, for those that are, are new to our um, webinar today, we're going to uh, just kind of go through some of the tricks, I guess, to be able to access and, and share questions and whatnot. So for, for those of you that are, uh, oh, is, our screen is kind of showing up odd, is it? You're not getting our full screen? Let me just check here and see. Okay. Just, oh, just minute, I'm just going to go into something here. Move some things around and see if I can't. No, we've got. Let's see if that helps at all. Okay, does that give you a full screen? Okay. Oh, good to go. Slideshow is good to go. Okay, good, good. Mm -hmm. Oh, technology, eh? Oh. <laughs> Learning. Yeah, it's all about learning, that's for sure. So as, as I was saying here with, uh, for those of that are just joining us, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to put them in the Q&A box down in the bottom there. You'll see along the black bar on your screen. You can just type it in there. And, um, oh, you said I lost my slide again? Well, wow, that's interesting. Okay. Must be something with Zoom because I know other people are having the same kind of problems that we are. Okay, let's try this again. You might have to show the sidebar like the last like yeah. else had to do. You might have to. How is that looking right now? How's that looking for you, Tanya? Is that looking okay? Oh fine. yeah, fine. Okay. Uh, oh it's not full screen, but it's okay, so it's it's playing up. Okay. See what we can do here. Okay. We'll just have to continue on. We'll continue on and uh, yeah, work with what we can. Okay, and so when it comes into uh, doing the chat, we have a, a chat room at the bottom as well. You can certainly enter some comments. Um, we'll be asking questions throughout the presentation. So if you uh, don't mind, just feel free to enter a uh, response in the chat room. That's great. It just lets us know everybody's there. And the chat room rules are there's no soliciting just use it for communicating with the host and the guest have a pen and paper handy because we'll be giving out some uh, information for you to write down and then learn about Ask yesterday me. what put in the chat room what you learned yesterday yeah did for you valuable information yeah did you find anything interesting there yesterday any any nuggets that you might uh, be looking into or that kind of tweaked your interest. I know I certainly learned a lot there from Christine and, uh, and the North, even though I've been there myself, but it's always good to hear from other people's and their experience as well. So uh, let us know what perhaps maybe uh, you picked up out of that presentation. Oh, burr. <laughs> burr. Yeah, this time of year, that's not really something we want to see, is it, eh? Oh. Mm. Uh, and yeah, and to, and to take the train, that would be an interesting trip. Like I said, it's, it's a long one. Uh, I think she says, what, 25 hours? That's yeah, a long trip. But boy, yeah, I'm sure you'd see some pretty interesting scenery along the way. 45 hours. Oh, right. Yeah, 25 is nothing, is it? Mm -hmm. That's cool. All oh, right on. Well, thank you very much for that. So we just wanted to share a little bit more uh, about us. Um, for those who know us, know that uh, we did run a bed and breakfast here for, uh, for a number of years, our, our Back to Nature retreat. 
Um, actually, we were, we were very fortunate. Um, Travel Alberta actually uh, did a feature on us and um, claimed that we were one of the six unique places to stay in Alberta. So that was a fantastic feature. And that mostly was due probably because we actually, when we did our bed and breakfast, we, uh, we offered special experiences for our guests as well because we knew that, yes, they wanted to come out and experience nature, but we also offered like photography, um, photo tours. We did uh, like a bird lover's packet so we could photograph birds and teach people how to do that in the backyard. And then we went out looking for the great gray owls because a lot of people love to see the great gray owls. I know we took one lady out and we seen 13 in about three hours. So that was a real treat. Uh, that was amazing. So, yeah, and so we have a lot of very unique wildlife, uh, you know, that come around this area because uh, a lot of our guests would ask, you know, how close we were to Banff. Well, we are a 90 minute scenic drive, but uh, there's a lot of wildlife in this area because we don't have that. Um, we don't still run the bed and breakfast, unfortunately, uh, due to some medical issues, we had to shut it down. So we've kind of changed things around. It's like, you know, when one door closes, another one opens. And so with that, um, now we're pursuing our, our love of photography, our passion of helping people reconnect with nature. And we're doing that in another means now. And uh, just to kind of show you there, there's my offices, well, our office, um, basically uh, working at home, a uh, lot of work done in the office, but then again, our office in the field is where we really get to get out and enjoy nature. So, so nature has become our therapy and because it's helped us in so many ways, that's something we really are passionate about sharing with people and, and that's why we're doing our, our presentation here this week. So we just wanted to, to share with you our, our poll results uh, from, from yesterday. Um, it was kind of, you know, it's interesting to hear what people are saying and thinking. Um, when we asked about the preferred style of travel, um, first class are at 39% and our mid range is at 61%. Um, and where's the first place you want to visit? Well, 47% was Canada. Yay, because you know we do, we have some amazing um, scenery and wildlife here in Canada. And you know, with limited international travel, definitely a good year to be looking into that. Um, Africa is at 14%, uh, the Galapagos is at 7 and other is at 32 so people are still definitely interested in traveling and we're just gonna, you know, wait until it's safe to do so and lots of precautions are being uh, done because of that. So when, with, when the international borders open up, people are wondering, you know, we're wondering when they're gonna travel. Well, um, people are anxious to get out there. So, you know, 13% we're hoping that we can get out this year. Um, and with 68% uh, for next year, we know next year is definitely gonna be a, a very busy year for travel. So that's something that we're really looking forward to as well and hoping we can uh, be a part of that. So please stay tuned till the very end because we do have some big announcements coming up to share with you. Stuff that we're going to plan on doing in the future. Stay tuned. Oh, my presenter screen is showing up again. Someone <laughs> said. <laughs> That's. Okay, let's see here. What can we do? Let's see if we can change this a little bit. Okay, I'm just going to go down. Yeah, I have to go this way. Okay. Okay, how does that look, Tanya? You're able to let me know. Is that just my, uh, yep, that's better, good. Okay, thanks, Wendy. We need a few more monitors here. <laughs> so anyhow, um, our, our guest speaker today is, uh, is Carol Kelly, and uh, Carol is the director and founder of the Medicine River Wildlife Center. Um, she's always been a starter. Uh, she's had a love for animals ever since she was a child, and owning numerous pets throughout her whole adult life. Um, she began as, as an SPA, SPCA while living in Newfoundland in the 70s, but expanded to wildlife when she found her true passion, Medicine River Wildlife Center in 1984. As executive director, uh, as executive director of the Medicine River Wildlife Center, she is the passion that drives it. Uh, the Wildlife Hospital is located in central Alberta and admits close to 2,000 injured and orphaned patients annually. That's a lot, of, a lot of patients and has treated more than 200 different species. Carol literally wrote the book on fostering of wildlife. Her research involves taking young orphaned mammals and birds and uniting them with parents in the wild. Beyond the hospital, the center helps people and communities with wildlife conflict issues presents about 150 formal educational programs each year, welcomes tourists to their unique playground and beautiful nature trails, hosts 
interns from around the world and provides volunteer opportunities. Today, Carol will be talking about how to live better with wildlife. The more we understand about our wild neighbors, the safer they'll be and the more we can enjoy them. So I'm going to go and bring Carol on here. Just a moment. Okay. Okay, so Carol and Aaron, I've turned you on so that you can turn your video on now. Hey. Hello. Hi. Hey. It's working. I'm just trying. <laughs> I'm going to find my program now. Hold on. Okay, I'm going to stop this. Okay, hey, hold. Oh, hey. mm -hmm. okay. Can you find your share there? Uh, I've lost your screen completely. Uh, yeah. Well, you're on right now, so it's all your show. You don't need my screen. Because we well, stopped. I do because I, <laughs> I do because there's nothing. The 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 Zoom screen. Oh. Hold on, just stand oh. by. Okay. There it is. There found it. Oh, it's got to take me a second. <laughs> <laughs> Love technology. Yep. We're all right. You got it. It looks good. How's that? How's that? With my technical advisor. There we go. Mm -hmm. Perfect. I'm up. Hi. <laughs> Do you want me to start and go ahead and down then? Yeah. You bet, Carol. Take it away. Well, thanks, Stan and Kelty, for having me here today. And I want to welcome everybody out there. It is a little weird. I, 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 it's, I've never talked to an audience where I couldn't see the audience. So this is a little strange, <laughs> but we'll do our best. First of all, just uh, standing, uh, uh, Kelty did a nice introduction, so I won't go on about the Wildlife Center, but uh, we were founded 36 years ago. And our goal is to take in injured, orphaned, and um, compromised wildlife. Uh, repair them, keep them wild, and get them back out into the wild as quickly as we can into appropriate habitats. Um, we do get about a thousand or two thousand patients every year, and the, of those two thousand patients, they, the majority of them, ninety-nine percent of them, have been injured by human uh, interaction. So one of the things we want to talk about today is some of the ways that people can. Uh, people unknowingly hurt them too. I wanted to make a point of that. People aren't purposely hurting them. They are unknowingly hurting them or damaging them. So some of the ways that I'm going to give people some tools today that they can minimize some of the damage that we see uh, in, in, our, in our wildlife. Um, this is uh, just a quick view. This is our wildlife, uh, new wildlife hospital. Uh, and, and this is part of our 453 acres that we sit on. So the first thing we're going to talk about is some things, three first things that I want to talk about are the three things that uh, we have been experiencing a great deal of in the past two weeks. So people um, unknowingly uh, have uh, places in their yard that wildlife are drawn to and want to nest or have their young but it's not a very convenient place one of those really common places is right over the light on your front porch or your back porch so when people um come out and they realize there's a nest right there uh they can they can no longer come in and out of their door because the parents are protecting them the the nest uh so one of the things we want people to do is have a quick look at your yard and if you do have nice lovely ledges that robins love over top of um a light by your 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 uh, front door any place that's going to be inconvenient try to cover those over uh, uh, with with boards or lattice or whatever you want to use to make it pretty but do cover those over so that we are not going to get people going oh my goodness there's a robin and i have to move her nest what are we going to do the other thing that we're experiencing daily over the past two weeks is people I think because a lot of people are home now, we're finding people are getting real, more, more they're, they're renovating and they're tidying and they're doing more yard work and things like that. And we're ending up with 
a, a ton of trees being cut down and we have experienced numerous species that are living in those trees already. We've had chickadees, uh, robins, uh, baby squirrels, uh, and even a pair of falcons when the tree was cut down. Um, there was, uh, there was, now we've got orphans on the ground. And in many cases, what we're able to do, uh, in the case of chickadees a couple of days ago, we went back and we found the log that they were in and put the babies back in and to put the, 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 the log back up sort of like a tree again and sat back and watched and the parents came back and were looking after them. So we're really pleased to try to Get them back with their parents if we can but we encourage people if you're going to be having to trim trees try to save it to the fall or um, what you can also do is just have a really good look in that tree before you have to cut it down and disturb those nests or at least wait until you know that they're finished and then trim the tree and I guess there's a lot of people going camping and moving their travel trailers and things like that. And we get calls constantly about, I've just moved my motor home or my travel trailer and uh, there's babies in the hitch. So we've had, um, we have 15 eggs in, uh, Robin's eggs alone in the incubator right now because they had been moved too far a distance to put them back again. A couple of times we've been able to, to get them back, uh, go back to where the eggs came from and actually get them back with their mother. In the case of a, some squirrels that went home in a travel trailer, we were able to get them back with mom. And uh, so we try to get them back with mom if possible, but it doesn't always work. So have a look at your travel trailers and your motor homes and just stuff a rag in any holes in the, in the winter so that come spring, you're not gonna have some unwanted guests. Um, some other things that we can cover are things like garbage, keeping your garbage and your compost covered. If you don't cover it, you are putting out a buffet and the buffet is generally for things like crows, magpies, and skunks. So you're going to have skunks coming into your yard and it's not their fault. You put out the buffet. So properly covering your garbage, your compost, things like that, you're not going to get those unwanted guests. And if you live in certain areas, of course, you're going to get bigger things like bear that come in to uh, feast on what you've left for them. Um, we also uh, find that people, uh, you, you sometimes people will leave pet food outside or they will leave uh, pet, uh, food out for uh, what, uh, some stray cats in the neighborhood. Unfortunately, what that does is it brings in uh, skunks. So if you leave cat food outside, we get a ton of calls saying, I've got a real problem with skunks. And when we investigate what we found is, it's not the problem with the skunks, it's the problem with the fact that somebody has left the food out. So again, uh, wildlife are looking for uh, free food. They're looking for the buffet and you leave the buffet out, they're going to come. So if, you, if you're going to leave uh, food outside at all for uh, a cat, the best thing to do is leave it up high on a ledge where the cat can jump. Skunks can't jump and they can't climb. So you can uh, absolutely uh, avoid the, drawing in the skunks by at least leaving the food indoors or up on high ledges. And uh, tidy up your yard. Skunks love messy yards. They come into where there are piles of logs, old uh, furniture left out in the backyard. That makes a perfect spot for skunks to come in. And uh, if you need to, to talk to us, we can show you how to properly seal around decks, sheds, your house, things like that, so that the skunks uh, will not be able to dig under. Uh, we get about 500 calls about uh, every year for, for conflict with wildlife and over uh, 350 of those are with skunks. So if we can take away the food and the shelter that the skunks are looking for, we're not going to have those negative reactions with the skunks. Um, and bird feeders, we encourage people to uh, take their bird feeders and make sure that they're clean underneath. Again, that draws in skunks, porcupine, crows, uh, other things that you may not want there. And the other thing that the food on the ground will ha can happen 
is when that food is on the ground and then you get a damp weather and the feces dropped by the birds at the bird feeder, the combination of damp feed feces and you end up uh, with salmonella and you could actually be killing the birds. We've had several outbreaks of salmonella under feeders over the years. So we encourage people again that if you're gonna have feeders, place them up high and uh, keep them cleaned under, uh, underneath. Um, about a billion birds die every year in North America from hitting windows. And people are always horrified when they have these lovely birds hitting their windows. Um, in the past, we've encouraged people to put streamers on the outside of their windows because the streamers uh, flap in the breeze and the birds don't go near the window. Uh, so people have tried things like putting falcons and stickers and things in their window. Generally speaking, the birds don't see it because what happens is the birds are seeing the reflection of the sky and the trees and they believe that they're flying into sky and trees. So they're not going to, they're not gonna think that there's a window back there. There is a new product on the market and it's called Feather Friendly. If anybody wants to Google that, it is um, a touted now as the most effective way to stop birds from hitting windows. It actually just, it just it's just uh, like a wind, window film that you put on, it puts little tiny dots on your window, not intrusive like the streamers and stuff. And uh, I'm, I'm told that it is the most effective way uh, you can, if anybody wants to purchase it, we do have it in our gift shop, but you can also purchase it online. But stopping the birds from hitting windows absolutely will uh, be a huge uh, difference to our, our bird population. And talking about our bird population, the, mo the number one reason why our bird population is crashing is free roaming domestic cats. Now don't, don't get me wrong, I am not a cat hater. I, I have two cats. <laughs> I've had dozens of cats over the years. My cats live in an indoor outdoor run so they can come inside or outside in their run. Uh, and this does two things or several things. It keeps my cat safe. Um, I, I don't have to worry about the cats being injured uh, or, or getting uh, in fights with stray cats or getting killed on the road or eaten by coyotes but I also um, know that my, my cats are not eating any birds. Uh, and right now there's over 200 million uh, songbirds, uh, they, they estimate being killed by free roaming cats in uh, Canada alone. Uh, so you can make a, an enormous difference if you keep your cat at home, plus your cat will live a longer, healthier life if that cat is, is at home. If anybody wants a, a ton of information on that, uh, Google um, Nature Canada's catsandbirds.ca. They have just an immense amount of information. They're not against cats. They're just wanting cats and birds to live happily. So please have a look at that and uh, consider keeping your cat on and run on a leash or just indoors. And we get numerous calls. I've already had several this, this spring about, oh, what are we going to do? There's birds nesting inside my vents. And now I can't use my um, microwave. Now I can't use my dryer uh, because the birds are in there. Uh, so have a look at your vents around your house, the ends of your eaves trough, things like that. All those lovely little holes that birds, that cavity nesting birds like to nest in. Have a look at all that and uh, cover them up. This is the, one of the covers here on, on, this, on the picture. It's just a cover over uh, my dryer vent at home. Uh, does a wonderful job of keeping the birds and, uh, uh, and other things like mice and stuff out of your vents. And we have people who put up fly tape to catch flies, but they don't think about the other things that fly. And we end up with little hummingbirds and wrens and warblers, little tiny birds get stuck on that fly, uh, sticky tape. So have a look around your yard and see what kind of traps you might have left without even meaning to. Um, the chemicals that you might use, uh, fine garden netting catches little birds all the time. Put covers over your rain barrels. We've already had people panicking because they found drowning birds or baby squirrels uh, in their water barrels. And um, 
um, and, 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 and not use those set of sticky fly traps if you can at all help it. it uh, just kind of look at all those things that might be a hazard if you were very, very tiny. And um, sometimes people want to keep wildlife away. It's not just hazards. Sometimes people want to keep them like we'll get calls about there's a deer eating uh, in my, my lilies. There's a porcupine eating uh, my favorite apple tree. Uh, there is um, a, 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 a rat hares nibbling on um, at bottoms of my trees. What can we do? What can we do? So one of, those th one of the things you can do in the summertime, if you want to keep things out of your garden and your plants, is the use of um, motion sensor water sprinklers. Uh, you just simply turn them, on, or turn them on, and anything that comes near and moves, this, these things whip around at quite a speed and startle the animals by just simply shooting water at them. So they're quite harmless, uh, but they do keep things away. Uh, we've seen it work on everything from deer down to skunks. So uh, using uh, sprinklers is, um, can, can be a, a really uh, easy way to keep things out of your, your gardens. There's a few other things, now these are called scare eye balloons. And uh, sometimes if you hang a scare eye balloon in a fruit tree, uh, the birds that come see that as an owl's eye, and they think there's an owl sitting in there. The balloon tends to move a little bit in the breeze, and, uh, uh, and then you've got, uh, they, they think there's an owl, so they'll stay away from your fruit trees. I have used them, and I have mixed reviews on whether or not these work really well, but you can certainly give them a try and see if they work in your situation. Um, <laughs> one time I got a call from downtown Red Deer, and they said, you have to help. There's a, there's a hawk and it's stuck by a, tr a string and it, it is caught on the building net to us. You have to rescue it. And when we went to it, we talked to the, the people who were in the building and they started to laugh. And I said, well, you know, it's not a funny thing. And they said, yes, it is. That's a kite. Um, so they're pretty, pretty, pretty realistic, uh, these raptor shaped kites. And they are fairly effective at keeping away uh, pigeons and such off of roofs. Um, and they, um, um, but they, but the pigeons aren't stupid either. Uh, so don't leave it in one spot for a long time and move it around various spots because the pigeons figure out that that hawk hasn't moved in about three days and there's I don't think it's a, a, a real hawk at all. Uh, some people will put the, the static uh, um, statues of uh, owls um, and you'll notice the pigeons will perch on that because the pigeons right away figure out that this thing that doesn't move is not really an owl. So, but they, if you can move those around to various places, they are quite effective. Uh, high frequency rodent deterrents um, are a safe option. Uh, you don't have to, uh, you have to you know, have cats always to, to um, control your rodents. Uh, most of these high frequency rodent deterrents, the, they have, some of them have limitations. If you want to use one, uh, uh, do some reading on them. Uh, they work really well in uh, a building where there's not a lot of blocks. They need, they need it to be in an open space. So you can't put one in one building and expect it to do the whole building if there's various rooms. You need one in each room. There are larger ones that can go, that go outside. Uh, so uh, if you wanted to discuss those a little bit further, give us a call and we'd be happy to give you lots more information on the, uh, those deterrents. And one of the things we always encourage people to do, if you're going to put up a bird feeder, um, you love the birds and you want to put up the bird feeder, but uh, your neighbor may be terrified of birds. Uh, your neighbor might have a whole bunch of cats in their backyard. Um, also bylaws in your neighborhood. Maybe you want to um, put some, so, some feeders out, but you live in Canmore. Uh, people who live in Canmore can't put feeders out because the bylaws uh, don't allow it uh, because it attracts bears. 
So um, make sure that you are aware of your neighbors next door uh, and, and your community's bylaws before you start attracting neighbor, uh, wildlife to your yard. We had one call of a, a lovely lady um, in one community in central Alberta who thought that she would be helpful and feed all the, the hares. And she thought if she fed the hares, they wouldn't then bother the neighbor's gardens. But unfortunately, she gathered 25 big jackrabbits in, in her in that yard and it became filled with feces and it didn't work at all. So I have lots of those kinds of stories about people encouraging things in when they really, it was the wrong thing to do. So make sure you, you know your neighbors' feelings and the community bylaws before you make any uh, changes to who you invite to your yard. And, uh, and and the, uh, the kind of the last thing may, uh, I, that I want to talk about is to know and understand the species that you are having in your area. Um, there's a lot of people who see things um, and they don't understand what that animal is doing and they get quite, quite concerned. As an example, we've recently, and we've, we've had several calls like this, um, when the young crows are coming out of the nest, they can't fly and they come to the ground and the whole family gathers around. They get very vocal, uh, very excited. Uh, they make a lot of noise to keep predators away and they all rush in with bits of food and poke baby with bits of food and look after it. <laughs> Unfortunately, when people, I've seen, had people looking out their window and they call us in a panic because what they've said is, oh my goodness, there's a baby crow. It's fallen out of the nest and all the other birds are picking on it. And when they actually didn't realize what they were doing is the whole family was rather caring for it and rejoicing that they were out of the nest, um, they thought they were picking on it. Um, we get a ton of people worried. Uh, we had someone worried that the uh, fox that they were seeing running back and forth across their yard was going to uh, damage their um, uh, miniature horses. I've had people worried that they were going to go after their children, uh, eat their dogs and cats, things like that. When a fox doesn't eat dogs or cats, it certainly wouldn't bother children. And they enjoy living next to people because living next to people keeps them safe from their predators, keeps them safe from the coyotes. And it also, uh, closer to people, there's often more insects and mice under buildings and things like that. So. There are a ton of uh, misinformation out there about our wildlife. Um, every day I get somebody who called me and said, I found a baby bird on the ground. Um, I didn't touch it. I put gloves on uh, because they're afraid to put the um, human smell on. Uh, birds can't smell. And um, so touching the baby bird to put it back in the nest is okay. Um, I had a little grade two one time say to me, or when I asked the grade twos, how come you can put the baby bird back in the nest? And one of the grade twos put up his hand and said, well, his mommy still loves him. And I thought, absolutely correct. So that's my best answer is, yeah, they don't care if you've touched them. That does not give people a, a, a permission to play with them, but it does say, yes, pick them up. It's okay. And put them back. Uh, many wildlife have been damaged um, or, or uh, killed uh, because people think they can't put them back in the nest. They can't put them back with their mother, uh, a fawn back with its mother because it's got a human scent. So um, uh, there's, and there is just a, a ton of misinformation out there. So if anybody has any questions whatsoever, uh, they see something and they're not quite sure how they should uh, react to this, just give us a call and we can talk all about it. And uh, um, be happy to help you guys through all of your your issues so I think that's everything we had to say today we might be a little bit short on time but uh, I think Correct. but I think we've uh, we've covered everything I look forward to your uh, your questions and please feel free to call us if you have any questions after this wonderful well thank you very much Carol that was very informative and uh, yeah we, we have some questions here um, I'll just maybe read them off to you and uh, see if you can maybe answer them for us. Uh, someone has okay. asked if, if you also take in magpies. Yes, we do. Okay. Magpies are part of the environment. That's <laughs> and that's a whole other 
story. <laughs> <laughs> we know how squawky they can be. <laughs> yeah, but they are an Yes, yes. Not everybody loves their voice, but they are actually a, an important part of the ecosystem. Yes, exactly. Yes, they are. Um, and so, how many birds are killed? Do you know by domestic and feral cats? Do you have any idea? Um, the their estimate, the Environment Canada says about two hundred million per year in Canada. Um, the in, in North America, they were saying. Um, Wow, wow. Was it four? I think it was like four million a month. Like you know, it was huge. The huge numbers. Yeah, mm, yeah. Unbelievable. Wow. Yeah. And, and and you can probably Google that because the numbers we increase. Um, I think it was forty million a year in in North America at one point, but I think it's higher than that now. No kidding. Isn't that crazy? And and I know you see yeah. even some of the yeah. bigger cities, the downtown, the damage that is done because of the windows that the birds are hitting constantly. I know I was in a hospital with my mom and it's just, what is that noise? And the nurse just looked at me and shook her head. And it's just sad to think yeah. that the birds constantly hitting the windows. And this feather friendly, uh, I, I'm told, the, uh, the, the, the window strike experts called FLAP, a fatal, it's FLAP, a, a Fatal Light Awareness Program, and they're out of Toronto. And that's what they used to do is just walk the streets during the migration, picking up bags of bodies and rescuing those that were still alive. But they're the ones that have, uh, have come up with this feather friendly product. So you just spray it on the outside of your window and then that... No, it's like a film. It's just like a film that you put on your, and it's in strips, and you just put it on. And it's Erin um, is actually about to put it on her house this week, uh, and she's got a spot that she's concerned about. Uh, and it just puts little tiny dots. We're going to put it on the wildlife center windows here in the next week or two, too. Oh, oh okay. interesting. Well, that's good to we'll know. To yeah. 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 Sure. Um, somebody had asked. Yeah, we're really eager to try it. Uh, someone had asked if you could please uh, name the site again regarding the cats and birds. I believe that was. Oh, the, it's, it's a Nature Canada. It's a Nature Canada site, and it's called catsandbirds.ca. Just Google catsandbirds.ca. Right, and yes, and they've they've actually um, contributed some information that you're putting into our uh, virtual travel pack, and I've seen some of that information. Just wonderful uh, ideas yes. to have there. Um, yes, and they're but they're all about making cats happy at home. <laughs> <laughs> yes, let's keep them home. Um, <laughs> also, oh, and uh, John and Catherine had asked, uh, could you please say something about garter snakes that some people want to kill but are yet are so very useful? Oh yes, I have a staff member who got called out um, a short while ago, or last year. It was last year. She got called out. Some people who had purchased a home um, and didn't realize there was a, a snake hibernaculum in their basement. Um, suddenly, there were snakes showing up all over their house. They, but they didn't kill them. They called us. Uh, we went out and took ninety-nine snakes. Snakes. She had ninety-nine snakes. Oh she God. gathered <laughs> and, and and we stopped them. there was a, a, a yeah a, we, garter snakes are wonderful they 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 sleep all together in a hibernaculum and then come spring they separate and they go out and about and they're eating all kinds of insects and little mice and things like that they're wonderfully beneficial not the least bit harmful uh to people so yes they are they are wonderful to have and we uh, we do a lot of snake uh rescue <laughs> I imagine. Um, Deborah was asking, you mentioned about FLAT. Is that F L A T? Is that the acronym? F L A P. Oh, P. Uh, it, stands for, it stands for Fatal Light Awareness Program. Program. Right. Okay. okay. Great. That makes more sense. Okay. Yeah. Um, oh, and uh, so someone had asked too uh, what do foxes eat? Oh, a little of everything. Um, <laughs> they do not eat dogs and cats, <laughs> except for dogs and cats and kids and horses. Um, they do. They eat uh, a ton of insects, fruit. They're big on fruit. I had a fox I had for ten years, and her favorite hand treat was a handful of raisins. Um, so they eat tons of fruit and insects. Um, they'll eat um, all kinds of uh, uh, birds and mammals, small birds and mammals in the wild. Um, so that's all natural and normal for them. Lots of rodents. 
Yeah, interesting, wonderful. Well, you've certainly given us lots of great information, Carol. I know I can see our, the comments that are showing up in our chat room. People are really enjoying what you've been sharing with us today, and I'm sure it's really going to help make a difference going forward, knowing that uh, we have that knowledge with us now. Wonderful, and if anybody has further questions, feel free to email us or, or give us a call. Great, great. And uh, just, just as a comment too right now, I know you guys are doing your owl visiting uh, fundraising. Can you just share a yes. little bit about that? Uh, because we couldn't get out to do our education programs in the schools, uh, one, we're not educating the kids, and two, we're losing out on some funding that comes from our education programs. So in a way to reach out to, to, to families and children, we offered if uh, for a certain amount of fee that, that uh, we will come to your yard with two owls, uh, we'll give you a little gift package, and uh, give you a 10 or 15 minute education program, personal education program, uh, right there in your own yard. Wow, that's a great. And it, it, the, first, the, first, the first two days were sold out. Oh, oh right that's on. amazing. So Good. see, there, there, that's, that's, that's definitely pivoting your business when you, uh, you have to kind of look at things in a different format. So no, I'm great, that's really working out. We all, get, we all have to get more creative. That's right. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure, exactly. So. Well, thank you very much, Carol. Thank you for joining us. It was a pleasure having you as always. And uh, we look forward to perhaps doing some fawn fostering here with you in the, in the near future. It's coming quick. It's coming soon. Thanks. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Bye. Okay, bye. Okay, so uh, that was, was quite a presentation. Lots of information in there for everybody, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. Okay, this one here. Yep, let's get it. Uh, okay. So yes, as I, as I was saying here, we've got some some great gifts in our in our virtual travel pack. Um, that's going to be coming up, and uh, we've got a poll here that we want to to launch for you. So that uh, if you wouldn't mind answering some questions here for us, that just kind of helps us, gives us an idea of uh, ways that we can help you going forward, and also to let us know if uh, the, from the past speakers that we've had this week, if there's maybe some information that they too can help you out with. So. Just take a moment here, if you don't mind, and, and uh, answer our poll. And then from there, we're going to get on to our virtual travel pack information for you. That was a good presentation, eh? Learned a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I didn't know skunks couldn't jump. Or climb. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that was pretty interesting. Yeah, lots of lots of great info there for you. Yeah. Just taking a few minutes here to, to compile. Wonderful. We got lots of answers. Thanks for doing this for us. Yeah. It helps us out in the future. Yes, because we got some uh, some new plans going forward here. We're just kind of pivoting our business too so that we can help people in different ways. And um, we don't know how long we're gonna be in this position with uh, with our kind of semi-isolation, but we work with what we got and it's it's learning new technology and, and making that pivot. So I'll just give you a few more seconds here to finish that poll if you don't mind. That would be great. I see there's still some more people just finishing up here so take a few minutes. We actually have just uh, experienced a, a young fawn just showing up. Uh, Mom brought her out 
was a couple days ago. Three days ago. Yeah. yeah, a tiny. Oh my gosh, it was uh, such a treat. Never seen one so tiny before. And, and it's interesting because our road has got some puddles in it. And so with the rain that we'd had, uh, there's little water puddles. And just watching that fawn, oh my gosh, it's like watching a two-year-old in a mud puddle, you know, jump in and jump out and splash and kick. And yeah, it, it's such a hoot to see that because, of course, you don't get puddles in the forest. So mom brings her out every now and then just to. Same, that's where the pool is. Yeah. Uh, it should come up on your screen. You, uh, someone had asked about the pool. You don't see the pool. It should be up there. It's uh, showing up. And we've got lots of people answering. So just give that a few more seconds. Yeah. Okay. The pool is working for most people. Okay. So uh, we're just going to close that here so that we can move on. I think we're having some Wi-Fi technica technical difficulties where things are really running slow here. Um, anyhow, so uh, with our uh, travel pack, of course, this is our thanks to you for coming and joining us. We, we sure appreciate having you with us here today. I'm just not sure that this is actually advancing the way it is. Um, Can you see our travel pack page there, Tanya? It's stuck on it's stuck on the beginning of some slide. Okay. All right. I'm going to. Oh boy. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Our Wi-Fi seems to be acting up. It's stuck a few pages back. I'm going to see if I can't just advance this gradually. Let's see if we can. Oh, it's stuck there. Stuck. Well, we live in the country, and uh, sometimes this is what it does to us. <laughs> Anyhow, well, we'll carry on. We're not going to let that stop us. Um, we do have a we have a, our virtual travel pack, and I have a link here that um, I want to share with you. I'm going to see if I can't maybe put that into the um, chat room box here. Pull that up here. And then you'll be able to click on it. And uh, I'll just kind of go over that here in a little bit. Oh, yeah. Okay. Photographing so much easier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyhow, there you go. Um, I put the uh, link for you in the chat room because for some reason our slide is not coming up so that I can share that with you. But um, from there, if you just copy and paste that link and maybe share it, save it into your um, desktop or something like that, and you'll be able to click on that and that will take you directly into our virtual travel pack. And that travel pack has got lots of great information that all of our guests have shared with us. Um, does anybody else, oh, here, let's see helps if I hit the enter. <laughs> okay, there you go. So is how about is the link showing up there for you now? Ah, there it is. Now it is. Yeah, makes a world of difference, doesn't it? Little things like that. So yeah, so have a look in there. And uh, there's there's lots of good information in there. Like I said, um, we also want to thank Nature Canada's Cats and Birds and the BCSPCA that have contributed some information in there, which I'm sure you're really going to enjoy. Um, be sure to check it out here too, because there is a a limited time offer in there as well so you'll want to take advantage of that okay that's going to try and see if we can advance this again nope. <laughs> okay well, well some people okay so we'll, we'll just we'll, we'll go with this um so our big announcement stan you want our to share? Big we have actually two big announcements for you first we're gonna um have more webinars like this in the future we Definitely got to work on the Wi-Fi part of it, but we're definitely going to have more of these webinars because we want to share with other small businesses like we have in the past week here. We want to share with them, put some spotlight on them in their area so they can uh, survive through this uh, time when uh, we can't travel or do anything. We want to keep our business in Canada, so we want to just put the spotlight on more organizations that work with wildlife and have small businesses that work and travel. So 
look forward to that. We'll be having that come out in our newsletter. So if you go over and sign up for it, if you haven't, go over and sign up for it. It's on our uh, um, Shopify website. Great, exactly. And uh, so, so with that too, um, we also have a, a bonus offer. And uh, what that is in regards to is we're also promoting is our, our second big announcement is that we're working on putting together some amazing hosted photography adventure trips. And uh, we'll be working with Christine from Travel Booker Adventures that was on yesterday. And we're looking at putting together trips. Um, we know, and while we've heard back that I guess this year there won't be much as far as any trips being planned for the fall, but we're definitely gonna be putting some out there for, for next year. So as soon as we get the, the go ahead, things will be uh, full force. And um, yeah, we're, we're gonna make them a really truly unique experience. Cause that's something I know anytime we've gone on trips, we want something that makes it memorable. and. Uh, to us, it's all about the experience of, of being there at the same time. So um, we're looking on th uh, trips to do with uh, the caribou. The and then Northern Lights. Mm -hmm. The caribou has always been one of my big ones. And then there's going to be a polar bear. And then we're looking into just some unique experiences so we can get people to reconnect with nature again and make it a really fun experience for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so some bird trips and stuff like that too. So when you get into your virtual travel pack, you'll see there's an access link in there for a free 30 minute discovery call. So um, feel free to check that out. Um, and maybe, you know, if you're interested, let us know. Um, we'll, be, we'll be taking, you know, um, basically applications for people that wanna come along with us. Um, right now we're looking at maybe groups of eight to 10, somewhere along there. And I, I suspect they're gonna book up rather quickly because uh, I know in the past it's interesting having done our bed and breakfast we've always had people mentioning we should be doing trips and uh, something I guess we've always thought about doing but you know it's interesting you know, like you said you know when one door closes another one opens and so we're really excited to be doing this and uh, oh my gosh yeah I was I was up till three o'clock last night trying to putting things together for that and well it's like technology doesn't seem to be on my side today but uh, it, it was fun putting it together and we're really looking forward to seeing uh, what all we can pull together with this with Christine because she's got a wealth of information and uh, we would love to get people out there and help them reconnect with nature and, and do a little photography on the side as well. And one more thing, just thanks to everyone for having patience and coming with us on this journey. And we look forward to doing more of this, like I said before, in the, in the future. So we had a lot of fun putting on this this week. It's been a lot of tripping and falling and getting back up. But as long as you get back up and keep going, that's the main thing. And that's what we've been doing. So we love sharing. We love telling stories. So we're looking forward to the future. Yeah. So this is our way of giving back. So, um, oh, and I, you know, I do have one more little poll that I wanted to bring up. I'm sorry. I forgot. I almost forgot about that one. <laughs> okay, Stan. <laughs> um, so this one here is just a little bit about the photography trip idea. So if you wouldn't mind taking a minute, it just kind of lets us know what kind of interest is out there. And uh, yeah, we would love for you to fill that out. And hopefully everybody's able to access the poll today. I don't know why the other one didn't quite work so well. Some people, it seemed like a lot of people got it, but there was a few that didn't. And I apologize for that. It might even be something in the Zoom. Who knows? Like it's oh, there's a few issues here. I'm, I'm noticing some. I think Zoom's also uh, kind of maxing out their their abilities some days. So, oh, wonderful! wonderful. I see the, the votes are coming in. That would be great. And I I know uh, we're certainly looking forward to to going back on some of these trips. Bird trips too is something I know is uh, definitely high on our list too of uh, looking into some different opportunities, you know, whether it's Costa Rica or, or uh, the Galapagos or something like that, that would be uh, a great venture to put out there. So yeah, let us know where you two would like to go and that helps us, uh, gives us a better idea of how we can help serve you. So if you have any other questions, feel free to, to put them in the, in the chat room or something like that. We, we hope you've enjoyed your time here this week. We certainly, uh, certainly been an experience, eh, hon? Huh? Well, we've enjoyed it. It's been, it's been fun. It has. it has been fun. We've enjoyed doing this. We love, it's just another way for us to communicate with our audience when we can't get out nowadays. Like they're not letting big groups for maybe even another six, eight months or so. We don't know. Everything changes day to day, week to week or whatever. So this is just the way we've learned how to share with our audience and, as you practice more, you get better. So look forward to doing more in the future. And when you, when you go into your virtual travel pack, uh, I did mention in there too about uh, if you're interested, you can sign up for our newsletter. 
Uh, we just send out updates on new product releases, um, special events, special offers, things like that. And uh, in doing that, you also are eligible to download our free screensavers too. So uh, check out that. It's just on our, our website. And our website is www.backtonatureapparel.com. And you'll see that there in the virtual pack. Someone mentioned spirit bears. Yes, I would love to go back and do spirit bears. That was one of the most spiritual trips that I've ever been on. It was to be in the rainforest like that. It was just something else. Oh, someone asked about what are spirit bears. Spirit oh. bears are not albinos. Uh, spirit, bears, spirit bears, they're yeah. actually a black bear and it's a double recessive gene. So you have two parents with that double recessive gene, sometimes two black bears that make up a white cub. And so they're very rare and just we were out there last September, so yeah, check out our Facebook page, Back to Nature Photo, um, and you'll see all kinds of images there and uh, some of our videos that we did, and it was just a, a fantastic experience. So something we're hoping that we can bring out for others to enjoy as well. Okay, great. Well, thank you so very much, everybody. We enjoyed having you, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you again here. Have a good one, and get out and enjoy a little bit of Back to Nature. Getting Back to Nature. Bye, Bye for, for now. now.